a mm. dire number for the second quarter, uh, coming in at 1.3%. What was your forecast? Because it, it seems that most economists really got this number wrong. Yes, I was looking at about 1.5, 1.6. So as you said, definitely below what most economists were expecting. However, having said that, um, given the weakness that we've seen in Europe, where about 30% of our exports go to, with growth in Germany in the second quarter coming in at about 0.1% and growth in France stagnant, yeah. uh, I think We're we shouldn't be good too surprised, to that. given that uh, we are so interlinked with the mm. global economy, and at the moment we have those pressures in those parts of the world. Well, uh, let's touch on how this is going to affect the interest rate cycle in the country. It seems that now that most are making a lot of noise about mm. uh, a possible interest rate cut down the line. We know that at the beginning of the year we're talking about a possible interest rate uh, hike. Mm. It seems that things are changing quite rapidly. Is this enough impetus for the Reserve Bank to sit up and listen to uh, what is happening on the ground from a growth perspective? Well, I think definitely this solidifies the view that we will not see an interest rate cut for the foreseeable future. Uh, I think for now, the Reserve you mean Bank. an interest rate hike for the for the foreseeable future? Yes, or not? an interest rate hike okay. for the foreseeable future, sorry. But I think uh, for now, I do not see that this is sufficient uh, reason for the Reserve Bank to start cutting interest rates because we are still growing. Year on year, we grew 3%. Yeah. In the first quarter, we grew 3.5%. Mm -hmm. So, look, our growth rate will probably come in at the end of the year at about 3% at the rate we are going. And I think given the inflationary pressures that have been coming through, we've seen inflation jump up quite significantly from the beginning of the year. It's now in excess of 5%. So I would say for now it's still a wait and see scenario, but definitely there is room opening up for the debate for a cut. Well, let's just take a look at job creation. We know that when it comes to job creation and, and with regards to GDP, we need to see a number well above 3% to make a significant dent with regards to yes. the unemployment number. What kind of numbers should we aim for, targets, so that we do make a significant dent within unemployment? We know that our Finance Minister Pravin Gordon has placed around 20 billion rand aside mm. for job creation, something that perhaps isn't filtering through as quickly as some would have hoped. Yes, I think the, the figure that our policymakers have put out is a growth rate of between 6 and 7% to achieve the growth targets that they have set in place. Clearly at this stage we are nowhere near those kind of, uh, of levels. In fact, we've, we've seen unemployment increase from the first quarter to the second quarter to from 25% to 25.7%. And given what we have just seen today with these GDP figures, the possibility of worsening uh, unemployment figures coming through for the third quarter is highly likely at this stage. Mm. Well, uh, looking at uh, private sector credit extension and money supply, yes, we've seen quite a bit of a movement coming through mm. on the money supply front, but still we're very far away from double-digit growth within this regard. That also makes uh, quite a big uh, impact on the interest rate cycle yeah. in the country. Uh, is this also a very big sign that we're just not seeing the demand on the ground, especially with that piece SCE number? Yeah, I mean, private sector growth, uh, private sector credit extension was, was low, slightly higher than anticipated. Mm. Money supply uh, eased slightly, but those figures I think are very much in line with the overall economic climate that we've seen, very much in line with what we've seen with the GDP figures coming out today. If I could just say, probably in addition to that, what we are seeing, um, if you one looks at the GDP figures, we've seen manufacturing doing very badly, yeah. but we saw finance and retail coming in fairly stronger. And I think what we are seeing is that the domestic economy is not necessarily that weak and it is providing some support in, line, in light of what's happening globally. But I think in addition to that, we have observed recently that consumers are becoming more wary of yeah. credit. So the credit extension figures, I think, also reflect a deleveraging at the household level, mm -hmm. that consumers are becoming more cautious and wanting to put something aside, just given that we've come out of a recession. And Sheshi, when I just look at where we did see actually a big contraction within the uh, GDP numbers in the sectors of the economy, agriculture down 7.8%, yes. mining down 4.2%, uh, manufacturing mm. down 7%. These are aggressive movements to the downside. Do you think these are one-offs? Do you think we could actually see moves like this in the third quarter as well? Well, I think that the chances of similar moves in the third quarter cannot be discounted. So that manufacturing figure reflects a lot the fact that we trade with Europe, that a lot of our manufacturing goods go to Europe, and we've seen significant weakness coming through into the Euro area. And it, 
we could see that continuing into the next quarter. I think as far as agriculture is concerned, some of that had to do with severe climatic conditions that we were facing in the country, and hopefully that will ease uh, into the next quarter. It is also quite sad what you say about mining, yeah. because the second quarter saw uh, resource prices fairly high, and the fact that gold uh, production contracted during that quarter yeah. is, you know, it's like a missed opportunity for us as a country. Mm -hmm. So we, we do hope we'll see things improve in the third quarter, at least in some of those, in some of those sectors. Fantastic.